Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining us at the market site in Times Square, New York City, Peter Vyhansky. He's a senior vice president over at Data Art. We're going to take a look at understanding desktop integration and controlling rising IT costs. It's great to have you back with us as always. And desktop side application integration, why should companies care about that? Why are we talking about desktop today, right? So again, here we are talking about the plumbing, the technology plumbing on the finance world. Well, the world of finance technology that we live in today is a result of a long and gradual evolution from in-person and phone to what's today a network of highly sophisticated systems. And because the evolution has been very gradual and also because of how complex the financial institutions and markets are, we've ended up now with a plethora, a, a, a gazillion systems essentially that all converge in a desktop. So if you imagine a, a finance professional desktop, let's say a trader, like you could have, what, four, six, eight monitors and you have dozens of applications running, you, you know, your OMSs, your EMSs, your you know, market data platform, your, you know, your watch list, your uh, order book, uh, credit, risk, settlement, uh, chat, charting, email, CRM, all those things, right? And they're all spread over uh, a multitude of monitors and configured just so. The human being ends up being the integration layer between all of these disparate applications that were all built at different times uh, by different vendors perhaps, so you still have, in 2020, you have people copying and pasting information from one mission critical system to another. I was just, the other month, I was just on site doing a customer assignment and we were watching a trader literally go into an application, select a grid, open a blank Outlook message as a clipboard, paste the grid, then select the row that they were interested in, then copying and pasting that into a search utility in a different application to call up the relevant info, information to begin constructing an order. We're still doing that in 2020. Now, on the other hand, that same person, and you and I, every day, we have access to a far superior user experience, let's say on our phones, right? Where everything is built to work very nicely and play very well together. All of our uh, applications on our phones are seamlessly integrated. You can do one tap from your email and uh, create a calendar appointment. In your calendar appointment, you can do one tap and jump to your maps to show up, you know, to show you the location of that meeting. From there, you can call your Uber. From your Uber, you can share your location with your friend, whatever you want to do, it kind of all sorts of sort of works automatically, right? What, so the question is, why can't we have that? Why don't we have that on a desktop as finance professionals? And that's what this conversation is all yeah, about. Yeah, it sounds like the, the integration part of it is really where the challenge is. I would imagine vendor, getting locked in with a vendor, that's got to be part of it also. For sure, for sure. So what's the solution to this? Mm -hmm. Build one platform to rule them all? Maybe, but maybe not. It really doesn't sound plausible at all. People have tried that, but it's, it's not no longer being viewed as a winning strategy. On the other hand, remember our conversation about open banking. It's the same sort of concept. Instead of trying to control everything and rule everything, reimagine you, what you're doing for your customers as a set of capabilities that are composable and are consumable separately and together as, you know, as your customers want. And so avoiding vendor lock-in is achievable through, if you can create a common language for all those applications to talk to on the desktop, so it's desktop side, client side integration as opposed to server side integration. If you could have a, uh, those applications share a common language and have a way of discovering each other, being aware of each other, kind of like apps are aware of each other on your phone, even though they're, they're built by different developers, right? But on the OS level, they have these integration capabilities, the hooks. So if you install your, a new messaging app on your phone, you are now instantly capable of sharing whatever you want, like a photo through that messaging app. It just works, right? right? So having this common language, having the discoverability, apps can discover each other and be discovered, um, and share data using common sets of data definitions and advertise their capabilities to one another. And that's precisely what FDC3 is all about. Have you heard uh, the... No, uh, tell us more okay, about that. Okay, so FDC3 stands for Financial Desktop Connect, uh, uh, Connectivity and Collaboration Consortium. Um, it was founded in 2017 by OpenFin, and it's being supported by Finos, which is a FinTech Open Source Foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, the participants in FTC3 include JP Morgan, Refinitiv, IHS Market, many, many of the big names that you'll recognize from the street. The idea behind FTC3 is uh, proposing and developing a standard for precisely this collaboration, a seamless plug -in, true plug and play integration without any prior bilateral agreements where two apps can end up from different uh, providers on the same desktop and just interoperate seamlessly out of the box because they're built on that same 
uh, standard. What about the rising costs of IT? It's got to, that's definitely have to be um, on the mind with the people that are running technology at these companies between get, you know, modernize, modernizing their, their desktop applications and you have to integrate legacy systems and um, kind of replicate that experience that you're getting from mobile. How do you help control the costs with that? Uh, it, well, controlling the cost is a huge part of it too because like we said, you know, we, we talked about a second ago, what do you do? Do you rewrite everything right. as one integrated big thing, a monster platform? Instead of big rewrites, what you can do with this technology is you can gradually transition piece by piece, slice by slice, and you can keep using your legacy application. You don't have to throw an, or, uh, away or rewrite your legacy application. You can get a lot of mileage out of them. You do have to change the front end, how you deliver the functionality on the front end to your users. Uh, like, for example, you never want to be building traditional fat clients ever again because mainly for speed to market uh, reasons. You don't want to have a three to four to six month certification onboarding process between the moment that you're done building your app and the moment your users can use it, right? So of course you want to be, uh, be building HTML5 web front ends. Um, so that's, that's one way that you will be controlling costs, right, for sure. And the other is uh, uh, avoiding uh, being locked in with expensive vendors. You can have your capabilities, you can procure those capabilities from wherever you want. If they're all following the same standard, you can compose your workflows. So essentially it's all about tasks and workflows mm -hmm. on the desktop. As a user, you want to do certain things to execute your job, right? And so instead of trying to copy and paste your way through your day, you can just have your applications talk to one another and have your experience be much more seamless and much closer to what we have on the consumer side. So where does data art fit into this ecosystem? How do you help technology companies? We, as a technology consultancy that's focused on finance, we're, uh, we're finding ourselves answering an increasing number of calls from companies that are looking for help uh, modernizing their front-end technology. And that's where desktop agent technology like OpenFin, like uh, ChartIQ provides, like Glue42, um, uh, and not unlike what Refinitiv has built with Icon, with uh, what Deutsche Bank has built with Audubon, um, those are possible answers to some of the pressing questions that our customers face. So we would consult our customers, we help them navigate their way through their existing technology and the possibilities that exist in the marketplace and uh, craft strategies and then execute those strategies uh, to essentially build a better future for them and their customers as far as their applications are concerned. All right, Peter, as always, great to see you. And thank you for thank joining you. us on Trade Talks. I'm Joe Malentrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.